Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time for the podcast that's going to go off topic. The podcaster that gets mixed up, that talks around. Will it go around in circles? Yes, a Scooter's Mind will it go around in ovals. Uh, or what's that one? Parabola. Maybe we'll talk about parabolas. Par- parabolas. Those, what do you call two people at a bowling alley? Uh, anyway, what, what is this person talking about? What's that? It's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. All right, everybody, Scoot's here. And I'm here with this, oh, this story you've all heard. A tale as old as time. The tale of the octopus who wore gloves. And you might be saying to yourself, Scoot's, is this a, uh, is this is is this a like one of those prequels or is it a, one of those like more of the Marvel movies that starts in the middle of something or is it different? And I'd say, well, this is an octopus one, and so this takes place. You remember this as you listen that it takes place in a world that we only know about through myth and underwater cameras and like uh, scuba people who scuba. Rovers, I think they call them, uh, because and this octopus lived under the sea. Uh, it's it has been sung before, uh, but this was the octopus that wore gloves. Uh, what you we would consider el- like gloves that go just uh, past the elbow, uh, which you don't see a lot anymore. Uh, I mean, sometimes you see some forearm gloves. I guess I would want gloves that go past the elbow. If I, if I was going for long gloves, you'd say, wow, these ones uh, talk about layering. And they say, well, are, are you going to be warm enough? Well, no, I've got my gloves on. Also, it would help. I mean, this is not under sea, but it would help with uh, the talking of gloves, right? Because it's like a big thing. Now, I don't live in a, uh, a, a an environment that could be frigid anymore, but that's, I think, one of the most underrated things, if, at least for me, one of my top strategies that I had as a kid and that I carried over into an adult in adulthood, uh, which did add one layer of difficulty, was you put on your gloves first and then your jacket. I don't know how many people out there do that, but let me know about it. Uh, but, the, the, like, uh, you put your gloves on. Also, I wear mittens. We could, we could talk about that. I don't I don't wear gloves. But, uh, like, uh, you, you put your gloves on, especially if this is, we're talking winter gloves or winter mittens. And then you slide your arms into your jacket, um, and you do have to do a little pushing. But then, you know, in an ideal situation, for example, if you're going sledding, this is the the example this is most fitting for, or I guess a general snow frolic. So this wouldn't be for people that are more into structured activities like snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, downhill, you know, snowboarding, skiing, though it could apply. But what you do is you put your gloves in through your jacket. I think I told you, and then, and then you zip up your jacket. That's going to be the hardest part when you have your gloves on. And then, of course, something inevitably comes up within 10 minutes of you getting outside that calls for you to remove one glove. But it does create, it's, it is a treat. Holy cow. If you need to treat yourself and you're in a winter environment anytime in the next, you know, anytime after this point, and you say, wow, you know, I, I really could go for a treat. I say, okay, go ahead, put some gloves on, then put a jacket on. First, put on everything else. Maybe even your hat, because getting a hat on with gloves or mittens is not exactly easy. Then slide your gloves to your jacket and zip your jacket up. Maybe have someone there to assist you. This would be one of those occasions where a squire, here's a job, here's a potential niche business. Uh, just an idea that came up in my head is uh, squire, winter squire. You say, 
Wintersquire.com. Maybe I don't think I'll be purchasing that because I don't think I could uh, spell Squire. Was there was there a rocker named Billy Squire? Is that somebody that was really like? Uh, is that like? Um, some was that a really th- a thing? But you could be a winter squire. That's pretty nice to say. Winter squire. Well, what do I do? What do you, will I come by? Make sure it's easy to get. I mean, you could. It, I guess it would be better. It wouldn't probably be very profitable. Because you say, what's the market for that? And you'd say, well, I don't know. Because you're right. The people that could, we, 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 the ideal market probably already has some sort of, uh, you know, robot or like something like Rosie the robot that does it for them. Um, so I don't know. You could do it for like a, a gift. Uh, there you go. What would you get me for the holiday season? Ooh, uh, coupons again. Oh, coupons. Did you clean out my fireplace? Cause remember that was your coupons from last year. Uh, you lost the coupons. So I can't like, I, they were non-transferable coupons. So I was unable, yeah, I was unable to clean your fireplace. You got to present me with coupon. Then we schedule it. Then you present it to me again. And then it was, so that's like, just so you know, that's how it works with my coupons, gift coupons. But this season, yeah, I'm going to give you, I'm going to be your winter squire, uh, which is only available, it's available in, uh, yeah, in what does a winter squire do? Well, I help you get on your winter clothes before you go outside. I don't go outside. Uh, that's not included in these coupons. And then when you come home, I uh, I don't help you with any, like, defrocking or the mess that most people leave behind. And I've never, I don't own a mud room, so I don't know what it's like for people to have that mud room or a garage, but I will have uh, hot cocoa prepared for you. So those are the roles of your winter squire. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, the key thing is that I make sure you put your gloves or your mittens on before your jacket. That's what I'm really here for. Make sure your hat's adjusted. And then, you know, if you have one of those jackets that zips and buttons, no one ever, that's underrated. The, 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 you don't know how much... Uh, you know, that that zipper is literally, you know, that's why we want to button that flap is to have full, you know, cover your zipper. But so that's what a winter squire does is, uh, so anyway, that's just something I thought about when I think about gloves. I think about that feeling. Talk about security. You see, there's no wind getting in on my wristy poos because, uh, I've got a jacket over my, the cuffs of my mittens or my gloves. And you may say, Scoots, is that why uh, the, uh, the, the the octopus wore gloves? And I say, no, actually, it's not. Uh, it is actually in octopus lore. If you really, and, and, and some people may say they're, they, they have an experience, you know, until you've really been with, like, uh, like you've talked about myths, uh, or you say, well, is this similar to the monomyth? Yeah, they say, no, this is the octomyths. Uh, and I say, oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. And then they, they say, please don't kiss any, you know, don't, monomyth, no kissing of octopuses. You're just, I thought you were just here to learn from us. I say, oh, no, no, I was just uh, trying to use big words that I knew. Like monomyth, I don't know. That makes me feel like I'm uh, in like Campbell, like a, like I'm Joseph Campbell or something. But so in the in the world of the, like the octopus who wore gloves is really a legendary. I don't know if it's a folk tale, or I mean, or a myth or a fairy tale. But so once upon a time. Uh, there was an octopus, right? Uh, lived in the oct- octopus world under the sea. And uh, this octopus, you know, lived at home with its family. And this octopus's name was Nazzy. Nazzy, not Nancy. Nazzy. Can't you say it like Nancy, but it's not Nancy. It's Nazzy. The- Nazzy the octopus. And Nazi reached that special age that many characters reach in uh, in sleep podcasts. Uh, 
where uh, they said, why don't you go out and swim around a little bit? Uh, and this, and as he said, like, like, by, like, just go out and swim around. You don't have to ask or have a destination or have a time to be back. Or is one of you going to come with me? Or should I call a friend? And they said, no, 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 Nancy, just go out and, you know, go around and see how it goes. And Nancy said, you want me to just go out and see how it goes? Uh, and they said, yeah, go ahead, go out there and, and you know, go out there in the sea and uh, see how it goes. And Nancy said, okay. And so Nazi went out, and Nazi like first went along the reef, and uh, kind of was enjoying. And if you've ever seen an octopus swimming or moving, I don't know if they call it swimming. The, you know, with that jet, they they I think they travel by water jet or something. But you know, Nazi was there among the coral, and the great thing about uh, for Nazi was that when you're moving there. Well, you can sense other things, and I don't, again, I don't know, I, I'm only studying octopus myths, so I don't know if there's echolocation happening or hearing, but Nazi was really in the zone, hearing everything at once and hearing nothing at all at the same time, and just swimming, and the colors were bright, and the sunlight was breaking through, and the reef that Nazi was on was kind of uh, gaining elevation towards the water surface, so the water temperature was changing and slowly getting warmer and warmer. But then off to the right of the reef, and Nazi noted uh, that down in a bit, what we would call a gully, so, uh, you know, I'll use these kind of earth, you know, land walk in terms for all of us, uh, just off to the right, down a gully, uh, in between the reef, uh, which would look like a like a valley a little bit, not not that high up, uh, uh, saw something down there moving, but uh, I don't know something about it. Uh, just in the peripheral per, peripheral of uh, uh, Nazi's vision, said uh, huh, something down there going on, and so Nazi took a long. Turn. Now, now, this may have been instinct, it may have just been style, but if we were watching from above, it would say it was with a flourish, like an ovular circling, uh, looking down. And Nazi saw what uh, could be, only could be called some sort of ma- like sea mammal. And some of you may be seeing like a manatee. Some of you may be seeing a sea lion or a seal, maybe even an otter. Not anything whale, whale-based. Uh, something that, that is uh, comfortable on land and the sea, maybe. At least in your imagination, because you'd say manatees don't go on land, scoots. And I'd say, yeah, I'm just trying to anthropomorphize this just a bit. Uh, Nazi spun around. And it was like in a bed of uh, what, what, from our view, would look like a gr- green grass. I don't know, kelp or something on the ground with flowers in there. Like, uh, and I don't begin to us, would you'd say those are like, uh, are those flowers purple or hot? Somewhere between a hot pink and a purple, those flowers are. And I say, yeah, it looks like that to me, too. And Nazi said, uh, looks like uh, that uh, sea lion we'll use in this case is just crawling around in there. And uh, so Nazi went around and Nazi headed down and uh, the sea lion looked up at Nazi and said, hey, Nazi said, what are you doing Uh, and the sea lion said, I dropped something. I was up there uh, swimming on the surface on my back, and uh, I had something, and I dropped it. And Nazi says, what, what, do you, what did you drop? Uh, and the, 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 uh, the, the, the sea lion said, well, is it, the, it, like it was a shell. It, like I, I saw this, this film about otters, uh, 
and I saw that sometimes they go on their backs and they eat right off their stomach. Uh, and, and as he said, they showed it to us at school, the same thing. I know exactly what you're talking about. And the sea lion said, yeah. Like, so I said to myself, uh, I got to try that. Uh, but I just had happened to be collecting some bivalves that had, you know, given themselves up uh, to the circle of life uh, for my benefit, which I have great gratitude for. And as he said, great gratitude uh, for the circle of life. Uh, and the sea lion, and, and the sea lion said, "By the way, w w what's your name?" And Nazi said, "Nazi." And uh, the sea lion said, "Cool, uh, I'm Ali." And uh, so our names kind of almost rhyme. And Nazi said, "Ali, Nazi, kind of, yeah, kind of." Uh, so anyway, you you had me had uh, eating like an otter because I can't eat, I can't technically eat like an otter. And as he said. Uh, I tried it one time after we saw the movie at school, and because I, because it, you know I'm, I'm not shaped in the otter in the otter way, you know it was hard. You know it, well, I tried putting so so the sea lion said, "Don't worry, I'd, I would like to hear your 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 take on my story before I complete my story. It doesn't bother me one bit." And as he said, "Good, because I have a uh, you know tendency to do that." Uh, and the sea lion said, "Don't we all?" And Nazi said, I guess we do. So Nazi said, yeah, it's trying to eat off of my body. W w w like, uh, it's just what I call it. Uh, some people would say, isn't that your head? I say, no. Is it your torso? I'd say, y it's my head and my torso. But, but, but like the food would either slide off or then I'd have to pick it. Like, then I'd have to get, it just didn't work. So then I tried putting four of my, uh, arms together or you could call them legs either way we we don't really care i don't know if you know that and uh the the sea lion said uh uh ali said i did not know that that's interesting but then i was trying to eat out of my things and then it was like some of the food was getting in my you know my suckers and then some of it was between there and then it just didn't work either so, like, I think it would be cool to eat like an otter, maybe even more so for me because I hadn't found a way to do it. And uh, then, uh, like, Allie laughed and said, there's probably a good reason neither one of us is otters. Uh, but, oh, boy, does it, like, it looks like that. Do you think the otters are really enjoying themselves as much as it looks like? Uh, and as he said, I hope so. I really do hope so. And I think that we both are, like, I don't think it's projection. If we're both uh, doing it separately, we came to the conclusion. And uh, Ali said, yeah, I wonder. I don't, I've never met an otter. But uh, so anyway, I was there. I was trying to eat uh, like an otter. I guess I have some advantages that you don't have, Nazi. But I don't have all the advantages. You know, I have a big, wide area to eat off of. But it was very awkward for me. I'm not used to. I, I do some floating on my back, uh, so that part wasn't. But like the eating part, I'm not really. I don't have as adept, uh, like uh, whatever you call those things. What do the otters have? Do they have hands or whatever they use? And so I was trying to eat, and I was kind of somewhat successful because I had prepared everything uh, ahead of time. And when I prepared everything, I noticed that one of the shells I had looked just like my Uncle Cluj. And, uh, and Nancy said, you got an Uncle Cluj? And the sea lion said, yeah, I got an Uncle Cluj. And one of the shells, it was like a shiny, beautiful profile of my Uncle Cluj. And, and as he said, wow, it's interesting. So shell... Looked like a side view of your uncle's head. And uh, Allie said, yeah, I mean, not exactly, you know, like different because it was shiny. You know, like the shiny inside of those shells. And then Nazi said, well, what did the other side look like? He said, well, it was like this one of those cool shells, so not one of the boring ones. So even though the outside wasn't shiny, it had those uh, scalloped edges and... 
not a scalloped shell, but it was, it, it was beautiful. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And as he said, sounds like it. So I set it aside because I said, this looks just like my Uncle Klush. Now, just like we had gratitude for the circle of life, uh, my Uncle Klush had, had, is, is on my Uncle Klush's own journey beyond the sea, you know, into the sea where uh, the famous uh, Lady Witchbeard, you know, the land of 11 seas or whatever, not this, just was this uh, spaceship Earth sea. And Nazi did not know what the, but Nazi just nodded politely because Nazi had ever, and never heard any of that stuff. But, uh, but, but Allie could tell and said, okay, well, maybe, maybe you should ask your parents about some of this stuff. Uh, but I, I was going to give the shell to my aunt because I said, well, or keep it for myself, give it to my parents, give it to somebody. Cause he said, this just looks, uh, you know, it's important. And you know what it made me feel? It made me feel good. It made me feel good to give it to somebody. Its beauty and its shine made me feel good. And as he said, I can hear that in your voice. Uh, um, so where where were we? And uh, Allie said, good point. So, there, so I, had, I had had it set aside. And I had everything else on my belly along with that shell. And then I started eating. And it was going, now it wasn't going good. And then a wave came and splashed me in my nose. And then I kind of got, and then the shell fell somewhere in this grass around here. And I can't find it. And I've been looking forever. And that's why I'm crawling around down here is I'm trying to find the shell. And Nazi said, uh, well, maybe I could help you. And the, 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 the and he said, well, that'd be great. Uh, like, if you see a shell that looks like the profile of it, you know, if it looks like my profile, but it's caught in the grass, I don't know what we're going to do. And then Allie kind of, or then Nazi kind of realized, well, kind of the way my body's designed makes it hard for me to do a, like, a close-up search in between the blades of grass. But then Nazi said, well, I have all these arms. Let me try to p just pick up a bunch of stuff. But Na what Nazi found was that uh, it wasn't very efficient because, uh, like, uh, the, there was, like, I ended up just picking up a bunch of pebbles and a bunch of other stuff and even saying, well, I don't know if these flowers or this grass wants to be disturbed. And politely, Nazi did spend some more time uh, working with Allie. And then Allie said, why don't you run along? You know, you were in the middle of something. Uh, to be honest, I think this, you know, may, may, I know my, my Uncle Kluge knows I'm, I was looking. So, yeah, I appreciate your help. But you, you, you run along, okay? And Nazi said, fair enough. Uh, so Nazi went off again. And even went to the surface and instead of like having anything to eat, like kind of tried to pretend like, uh, you know, Nazi was an otter and wondered what an otter was like. And, uh, and, and Nazi, uh, was, it was kind of daydreaming and didn't really realize that, uh, Nazi had gone in, you know, for, like they lived close to a couple bays, uh, in some inlets and those kind of things. And Nazi had kind of gone into, uh, like a shallow bay, uh, an offshoot of the, 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 the sea or wherever they lived. I don't want to, you know, I, 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 this is a Nazi does not need us coming and swimming in Nazi's area. And, uh, Nazi had noticed that water temperature had picked up quite a bit. And then that, uh, the ground was kind of close, uh, and that the water was a little more murky and that there was, uh, uh, lily pads and those kind of things. Uh, and as he said, huh, interesting, uh, I'm out of the depths of the water, but this isn't the beach. This must be one of those, like, uh, whatever, saltwater swamp type of thingamajigs, uh, brackish something. And, and as he was kind of looking around saying, huh, this is cool, uh, 
I know I've heard of lily pads before, and, you know, we went on a tour of this area for school, but I never seen this. Uh, and then Nasty heard something and said, hey, hey, you. And Nasty kind of said, what, is somebody talking to me? I said, hey, you, 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 yeah, you. And Nasty said, me? And they said, yeah, and who else am I talking to? And Nazzy looked up, and there was a dragonfly who just landed right by Nazzy. Uh, you know, like uh, Nazzy said, "Wow, you are beautiful. You're a dragonfly." And uh, the dragonfly said, "I'm not just any dragonfly. I'm Danny the dragonfly. How you doing?" And Nazzy said, "Well, we're pretty good. Uh, just to, like." Uh, I was daydreaming. I got in this uh, area, and uh, the blue dragonfly said, "You lost." And uh, Nazi said, "I get. I don't think so because I can hear the, 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 the those things that make the ringing sound that are on the surface of the water that the humans use, and I use those to find. You know, I always use those to kind of figure out where I am." So I guess I'm not technically lost, but I'm kind of lost in a good way. I, I'm on a bit of an adventure, just cruising around. And the dragonfly said, just cruising around. That's cool. I was just flying around. And uh, I landed on this thing, and I saw you there. I said, is that an octopus just cruising around? And I said, what's an octopus doing here so close to shore? And uh, Nancy said, nothing, I guess. And the, what's a dragonfly doing on a lily pad? I thought just frogs were on lily pads in the movies. And the dragonfly said, no, nah, pretty popular with the dragonflies. Probably more dragonflies on lily pads than frogs. And uh, the dragonfly said, you mind if I ask you a question? And Nancy said, other than that question. And, and the, the dragonfly laughed to Danny. And Danny said, uh, looks like you got something on your mind. And I said, well, I just was with a sea lion who lost a shell. And I was thinking about that. And it said the shell looked like a profile of the sea lion's uncle who had moved, changed seas in the journey of life. And uh, the dragonfly said, well, that's some serious thinking for a kid. Uh, you probably have some feelings about that, huh? And Nancy said, well, I guess, well, I was feeling warm, but it, it turns out that was more of the, like, I guess I was feeling more warm, like thinking about, well, that's nice, uh, because the sea lion wanted to give the shell to someone else, uh, and the sea lion was telling me how good it felt to, to think about that and how beautiful the shell was. And the dragonfly said, well, those are strong feelings. They don't have to be strong in any direction, uh, but those sound pretty nice. Yeah, pretty nice, but again, I can't tell if it's the water temperature or my feelings. And the dragonfly said, you try, you're you wishing you could uh, help the... Uh, the the the, uh, the the sea lion find the uh, shell, and Nazi said, "Yeah, I got the my my uh, my suckers got in the way, and uh, like it, we just wasn't able to do it. I wish I was an otter." And and then the dragonflies, everybody wishes they were an otter. It's pretty common. Uh, the only people that don't wish they were otters are. Uh, I don't even know. People that uh, probably be better off saying, well, have a good day. No need, you know. And Nazi said, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Nazi said, uh, you got any ideas of how to help uh, uh, that uh, sea lion get its shell? And the uh, dragonfly said, well, I got an idea. Not a, like, uh, how's your uh, manipulation of your arms or your legs? Uh, and Nancy said, pretty good. And the dragonfly said, well, why don't you hold out one and I'll try to land on the tip of your tip of your finger. Tip of your finger. We'll just can we agree to call it your finger, even though it's uh, your arm or your leg? And Nancy said, uh, yeah. 
And uh, the dragonfly said, okay, well, now lift me up. And, 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 and then the, the, they agreed to, 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 to do this on a regular basis. They became fast friends. Uh, and uh, they started, to, the dragonfly started to fly and dance and Nazi's fingers. This is again over months and months and months and months. And soon Nazi was really able, to, just to, from practice, to become very adept at uh, using Nazi's arms, uh, not in an otter like way, but in a, a very skillful octo way. And Nazi quickly developed a reputation across the, this area of the sea to say, well, you could have Nazi do it uh, uh, if it became for this particular specialty, but it was only with the, the very tips of Nazi's fingers. And a lot of people didn't understand that, so they'd say, uh, hey, do you know, uh, can you do this for me? And Nazi said, well, no, because I still have my suckers, uh, and while I have some control over them, and again, it did like, uh, you know, I worked with those as well. Uh, like, uh, the, you know, the, the, it does add some difficulty. And they said, understood, understood. And, and then one day, uh, Na- they had had Nazi because uh, they, they said, uh, somebody needed to sign, so, long story, not related, but uh, somebody needed somebody to sign something. They said, well, you could call Nazi. Uh, Maybe Nazi could sign it for you. And Nazi came, and they had a pencil that worked underwater. I think one of those grease pencils, probably. And it was a book. Uh, it was dictated, of course. Long story, but uh, but by uh, Professor Huff Huff Huffer, uh, which who was a, like a, a whale, uh, known like it was like uh, anyway, not important. It was a book. Uh, and it was a book signing, and then the whale realized I can't sign my own book. Uh, this was a this was a prep like a, this was like a soft book signing, which luckily they had the foresight. They said, "Let's do one for friends and family," and then the, the whale did a reading of it. Uh, oh boy, was it uh, wasn't super interesting because it was a book uh, like. Uh, like a pl- plankton across the ages, I think it was called. So it's very, very, uh, very scientific, very in depth stuff. Phyto, you know, phytoplankton. It was said, you know, you don't, anyway, I don't know my phyto for my plankton or my zooplankton for my phytoplankton. And so Huff, 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 Huff was said, uh, they called Nazi and uh, Nazi came. And it didn't work, like Nazi could technically sign the books, uh, but it just didn't work with the, between the suckers and the and the thing. And uh, the, the just like Nazi could make general signature, but the huff, huff, huff uh, was not, uh, said, well, I prefer to just not sign the books at all because it just doesn't feel like, uh, you know what I mean? And, and there's uh, no harm. Uh, we tried. And, you know, we're not humans. I don't know why, like, uh, and I said, we tried to get an otter to come sign the book, but the otter just was too, you know, said, I got joy, I got frolicking to do. And as he said, huh, and the huff, 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 or said, uh, you know, I know this, uh, this bird, uh, some sort of, uh, like a bird, it's out on this rare island, not that far. Like, I could give you a ride. Well, I can't, but I have somebody here that could give you a ride out there. And uh, according to this bird, uh, this bird makes clothes. It lives on an island where a bunch of uh, stuff washes up that falls off of container ships. And this bird, like, wears a coat and... Uh, like an ascot, which is like a bit like it goes around your, the bird's neck. You say, well, that doesn't seem like a good idea. And even has a hat. And as he said, interesting. 
And what kind of, what, what, and they said, it's a dodo bird. According to humans, uh, th- this is a very few of these in existence. And uh, 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 said, uh, yeah, it makes, uh, makes sense. Uh, but I'll set it up if, 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 you're, if you're down for it. And Nazi said, why not? Uh, oh, why would you want me to meet this bird? And uh, huff, 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 said, I don't know. I just get the sense that, uh, I don't know. There's like something reminded me of it. I'm not sure the exact association. So Nazi said, okay. So the, the, this uh, other whale, Nazi got with the, like, the whale and uh, like attached itself to its back. And the whale started swimming and uh, Nazi just started to enjoy the ride, you know, met some cool barnacles and pretended Nazi was a barnacle for a while. And you listen to the whale, sound of the whales breathing. You ever want to relax, you listen to a whale breathe, man. And eventually Nazi got to this island and, uh, and there on the island was a bird and Nazi, like, uh, said, well, uh, how do I get a hold of the bird? And the whale said, I don't know. you got to swim in because I can't get that close to the island. And so Nazi went around and swam around the island and obviously didn't want to get uh, too close. And then one day, like, a storm came in and kind of, like, the way the currents were, Nazi kind of noticed... Uh, that there was some swirling, that there was like these kind of these weird eddy type currents uh, around the island where stuff would go towards the island and then it gets swept uh, and kind of float around, maybe due to the undersea landscape. I mean, first, Nazi didn't like it because Nazi thought it was going to get washed up and then it would turn back around. And then after the storm, Nazi noticed that there's this one big metal container floating. And uh, Nazi said, oh, okay. Then they say, the whale say the bird gets stuff out of these containers. Maybe I'll just stick to the side of this and wait around. And Nazi eventually, like, this bird lands in there, and the bird's wearing a coat and, a, like, a, like, not a cummerbund. But the kind of like uh, the thing you would put like a bit like a cummerbund, but it's like the f- f- like a frilly thing that goes on your chest uh, that you put on like a vest and a hat and uh, uh, landed on there, and the bird pecked the thing and then listened to the sound of the like the sound of the inside of the container when it's packing. And then the bird was kind of talking, okay, let's see. And then it was reading the sides of the container. And they looked over the side, and Nazi was on it and said, whoa, hey, you're an octopus. And Nazi said, yeah, you, are you the bird that, uh, you're the bird that wears clothes, I guess. And the bird said, wears clothes, makes clothes. My name's Bitra. And Nazi said, I'm Nazi, nice to meet you, Bitra. And uh, the bit right said, well, what are you doing here on the side of a container? And, and as he said, uh, waiting for you. And bit right said, really, what are you waiting for me for? And as he said, I'm not really sure, but I met a whale and the whale said, I should meet you. And bit right said, interesting, interesting. And uh, Nazi said, what are you doing exactly? Are you checking to see what's inside of here? And Bitra said, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what's in here because I've been doing this a while. But this is a container. This is what humans use to ship stuff. And somewhere on the shipping lanes that are near here is uh, like one of the things they ship is clothing and for some reason, this that's the closest shipping lanes to here is clothing. And a storm will come and it'll knock some of these containers off and some, some of them get caught in the currents and stuff. And eventually, they don't ever wash up on shore. They just kind of sit here floating. And as he said, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, 
that's what you're waiting for, you. Yeah. And uh, Bitrus said, yeah, you're smart, smart, you're a smart squid, I wanted to say, but I know you're not no squid. And Bitrus says, strangest thing is uh, I need some help. I used to have, uh, never had an octopus help me. I did have a squid that used to help me get this thing. We do want to ground this and... Uh, uh, then uh, Nazi said, what do you mean grounded? And, and Bitrus said, well, we get it into shore uh, on high tide, as close as we can get it. And we just try to we get, like, the squid uh, could, because of the eddies, I use this one particular eddy that you just happen to be in now. And uh, we would get it on shore. Then, the, like, if we just get it a little bit stuck in the sand, that's all we need to do. And then the tide goes out. And then I open the, the container. Um, and uh, then I take whatever's out of there, uh, the clothes out of there. And uh, and then that's, and then what's after that? And then uh, Bitrus said, well, then the, usually the container, since it's empty, it'll wash out uh, in the next uh, thing, or we'll push it over a little bit. And then the squid would carry it out during, uh, again, based on the tides, to get it out of the eddies so it'd float away uh, a little bit. And then it's sinking. We've got a nice reef going here. I actually even have some cool octopuses down there, but none of them want to work for me. And uh, Nancy said, why? And Bitrus said, well, I just pay in trade, so the only thing I could give you is clothing. And uh, m- most you know, most sea creatures say, no, I'm fine. I don't need any clothes. It's more of a, I don't know. They say, I'm not a dodo bird, and I don't know what they mean other than the, that they don't like to express themselves through clothing or they don't see the utility in it uh, because the circle of life has given them all they need. And Nazi said, that gives me an idea. Uh, I'd love to help you. You have other help? And the, the dodo bird said, oh, yeah, yeah, because they can't always get the container open. So I got some crabs that work for me, a couple other birds. I got a whole team. Uh that work for me in trade. We call ourselves the clothing crew. Everybody likes to wear clothes. Uh, but uh, you'd have to think about, do you want to wear some clothes? And then, yeah, you could work for me for a little while. Never, never, I've never had an octopus take me up on it, though. You, you, you octopuses seem as happy as otters almost. And Nazi said, well, you've given me an idea of a problem I've been trying to solve. Uh, and uh, uh, Bitrus said, tell me more. And so Nazi, I'll give you a short version because uh, so Nazi explained to Bitrus everything we've talked about. You know, the dream of eating like an otter, the lost shell, the meeting of the dragonfly and the ability to become the most, at this point, in, in, in the most dexterous octopus in the history of the world. But then the fact that, yeah, there were some times where there was utilities that uh, Nazi couldn't help with. And the difficulties that uh, ensued, and Nazi said, and that could really help people, you know, other sea creatures. Uh, and the, 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 the bit where I just watched knowingly and said, this is fascinating. And uh, as he said, why? And Bear, I said, well, I've always wanted to make, we have gloves. Uh, and then they said, what's a glove? And then Bear, I explained what a glove was. Uh, and it said, it just happens to be what's on this container, are these long gloves that uh, humans would wear for formal functions, I think, even though there'd be other occasions where they could wear them. They're traditionally like uh, uh, kind of given this idea that you'd wear it at a formal function, but uh, and I think they'd be perfect for you. We could use gloves that cover all of your suckers. We might have to go through a few iterations until we get the right idea, and maybe even some what's going to work best for you, or maybe even situational gloves depending on the situation. 
but I also think that you might be good working on clothes for a little while. Maybe you'll enjoy it. And Nancy said, well, I'm willing to try. So then they they did everything. They got the container. They unloaded the container. It's full of, like, uh, elbow-length gloves. It was bound for, like, a store for billionaires only. And it had different types of material. Even had some neoprene elbow. I said, "What? Even billionaires, they wear elbow gloves. They may have an occasion where they wear neoprene elbow gloves." And uh, then once they got that unloaded, bit right took. Uh, and it was difficult because again, this is you're talking about a land creature and a sea creature. But they actually, when the um, container sunk, uh, Bit Rye said, why don't you make the inside of that container your home and workshop? Uh, and Nazi said, well, I can make it my office, too, if I become a, get into my business. Uh, and uh, Bit Rye said, okay. And then the, over the years, uh, they, you know, at first Nazi became really good at helping with clothes. But Nazi said, this isn't really my thing. Uh, so it was more of a hobby and, and, uh, Bill Ross said, that's fine. Maybe it's time for you to go out in the world. What is it you really want to do? And Nazi said, I really want to find that shell. And, uh, so Nazi eventually went all, got a bunch of different kind of gloves, uh, had this business, became known for helping people, but at the same time was trying to find that spot, uh, with the green grass, and, and, and as he was checking spot after spot after spot near where, Na, you know, near Nazi's home, home, home reef, uh, looking for the place uh, that uh, the, 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 the sea lion lost that shell. And then when Nazi wasn't working, trying to find the shell and doing favors for people, saying, hey, could you pick that up for me? Could you sign this for me? Could you wave uh, in, in, uh, like this? Or could you hold We want to hold this thing up so it can be kissed by everyone, this young platypus. And as I said, no problem, not a problem. Can you juggle at a birthday party? And as he never was an anti-octopi, Nazi loved being an octopus and was a big part of the octopus community. It was just something that Nazi did. But again, at night, Nazi would look for, for the sea lion. Uh, but I don't know, sea lion, no, no one had ever heard of the sea lion. And then one day, after years and years and years and years and years of looking, Nazi was just out for a swim. And... Uh, Nazi had uh, no gloves, uh, happened to have no gloves on, just out swimming, out in the old reef, uh, visiting, you know, from afar. Had taken a whale all the way, you know, across wherever to wherever. And again, it was one of those days, uh, and Nazi was just enjoying it. And this was, you know, late in Nazi's existence in this uh, particular ocean. And again, Nazi saw something out of the corner of Nazi's eye. And it was a, a sea lion. It was looking around in some grass at the bottom of a gully. And Nazi said, you got to be kidding me. And Nazi went down there. And there was a sea lion crawling around, digging, digging, and digging. And Nazi said, what are you doing uh, and the sea lion said, you know, I told this tale of my father, found, you know, an uncle and uh, my sister and my aunt and my cousin. And this shell they'd always been looking for. And this particular sea lion said, you know, I've, I'm, a, I'm an expert and I know this is where it is. Uh, unfortunately, like the amount of material that has been accumulated uh, over the 26 years or whatever since it was lost, uh, it's been my quest. 
And as he says, it's been my quest too, and uh, let me help you. And they dug, and they dug, and they dug, and they spent, and then Naz even went and said, well, I could go get my gloves. And the sea lion said, no, I think it's, I think it's, this is one of those quests that just doesn't have a solution. Because, again, I, I figured it was a statistical impossibility. Like, uh, because of the basic shifting, every, every calculation I did. But I just had to try. Thank you for helping me try. And, uh, and as he said, I got this crazy idea that uh, r- reminds me of, like, uh, maybe we're on the wrong kind of quest. And the sea lion said, what do you mean? And uh, they said, well, what if we try to do how it all started? Let's go get some bivalves that are prepared to make their journey through the circle of life uh, and have gratitude for that. And the sea lion said, yeah, and have gratitude for that. And we just keep doing that, and we meet on a regular basis, and, uh, like, uh, we, we do that. And I have a couple of great spots to eat around here. And the sea lion said, well, let's go. And they just happen to be eating. And as I said, this, is, this particular brackish area is where uh, you met this, uh, you know, talking about their lives, both of them equally. And while they were eating, they heard this splash and splash and splashing going on, a splash that could only be associated with the pure, unadulterated joy. And a couple of otters come by, and they say, what are you two doing? You're trying to eat like otters? And they said, kind of. We're kind of, we always think it looks so fun, uh, eating like otters. And, you know, I guess we all, we never really talk to a lot of otters, but... Uh, it makes sense, and that I said, "Oh yeah, it's pretty fun, but uh, not as fun as like uh, would be, be an otter in general." And they said, "Well, what's the funnest part about being an?" They said, "Frolicking, frolicking." And then you know, we all have uh, our own like uh, pastimes that bring us joy. And uh, they said, "What kind? Of, like, what kind of pastimes do otters have?" Uh, and uh, there was one otter named. Uh, G- Ginanj and another otter named uh, Bootenhole. And Bootenhole said, uh, Oh, well, I like to uh, make a, a, a like, do, do, the humans have this thing where they cut someone's profile out of uh, paper. I like to do that with shells. And you could have heard a, a pin drop in the ocean when the otter said that. And they said, you make people's profiles out of shells. Uh, and the otter said, yeah, that's what I like to do for otters, but I could do it for octopuses or sea lions. And the sea lion said, well, could you do that for us? Uh, and then they became fast friends. Uh, and everybody kind of didn't get exactly what they wanted, but they found what they needed uh, there in a sea where the octopus wore gloves. Uh, good night, everybody. I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. Neve, uh, Desiree, and Justin. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Jay-Z, Dana, and Sarah. Thank you, thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Carrie, Andra, and Lily. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Carly, Deborah, and Camille. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Alexander, Joseph, and Sarah. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jonathan, Mark, and Eric, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Brad, Susan, and Casey, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Tori, Adrian, and Lily, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jimmy, Lydia, and Kristen, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Joe, Madeline, and Laura, thanks, you, thanks, and good night. The Guru, Brandon, and Hallie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kevin, William, and Cara, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Clayton, Samantha, and Jen, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Andy, Tammy, and Ashley, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Will, Flora, and Charlie, thanks, thanks, good night. And Megan and Kate, thank you, thanks, thanks for the support and good night. Yeah, so it makes this a free show because we'll be able to support the show directly or support the sponsors. That's how we'll be able to come out twice a week for free. 
we grow as a podcast and podcasting grows just by sharing the, like your experience with either sleep with me or podcasts in general. So if you if like, uh, if you have a chance to do that, that's a huge, huge help. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, it. I just want to, uh, we have a way to reward people that share the show at sleep with me podcast.com slash refer that I'll talk about here coming up. Thanks.